In right, guys, welcome to the podcast. What this podcast is kind of going to be is Tom and I jumping on here every week to just discuss the SMA industry, everything, business, sales, marketing, social media, Facebook ads, TikTok ads, everything. We're just going to come on and kind of discuss all the questions that you guys ask us every single week and put them in a long form content that we can get out to you completely for free. Um, so if you want us to cover any topics in future episodes, um, just drop us a message on Instagram and we can discuss it. It's going to be uploaded on YouTube, Apple Music and Spotify eventually. And you're obviously going to see all of the, the shorter clips on Wheels, TikTok and YouTube Shorts. So yeah, let's get into it. What's the first what's the first topic on the list we should discuss? Well, we've, we've had questions in about, from based on the last podcast we did, what do you do if you don't have any testimonials, which is something... Um, so so important that we need to talk about because everybody at some stage has no testimonials um there's there's lots of ways in which you can get them um there's lots of massive benefits of having testimonials particularly at the beginning because people doubt your ability in smma and doubt whether you're, you're completely credible so i think let's talk about testimonials harry you just share your experience about how you got your testimonials you obviously started with none just like me so let's yeah. dive into it well we said we said on the last episode every everyone starts their resume with no testimonials unless you've come from a, a job in marketing or a job in digital marketing you're not going to have any case study to go to a client and say i've run this campaign before and got these results so i think if you've got no testimonials and you you will get asked it when you go into a meeting if you're showing kind of signs of signs of nerves or you're showing that you are a complete beginner they are going to say oh can you show me the results you've got for this company or whatever um and there's loads of different ways you can go about it and you said tom you can either fight it or flight it and you, you, you've got to show you've got to show winning and there's ways around it you don't act you don't have to have a case study of a client you've worked with where they've paid you money in terms of your services there's loads of ways you can do it number one you can make your own testimonials in the sense that, or make your own case studies in the sense that you can go onto Facebook, create a draft campaign, build your ad sets, build four ad sets, build four creatives, build four pieces of copy, build an example funnel, build an example email sequence. If you're a website developer, build an example website. So then at least you can show a proof of work and the proof of the quality of your work to your client. And although that's not results, that's better than not having anything. If you want true results and a true actual video testimonial or a written testimonial from your client, from a client to take into future meetings, either do a free period, and I, I don't really like free periods, I know you do, Tom, and I, I do in a sense that they get to where you need to be, but yeah, that's the way you can go. You can offer three weeks, right? I'm gonna run ads for you for three weeks, keep all the leads. You can even ask them to pay you and give them a full refund if they're not happy or they don't close, close any leads, providing they give you a, a, a good quality testimonial at the end of it. That way, you get experience on the Facebook ad platforms, you get a video testimonial to share to other clients, and you can say you've, you've run ads or run a marketing campaign for a, a business in the same industry as you're trying to close. Do you kind yeah. of agree with all of that? Yeah, I think when you're first starting out in SMMA or a digital agency, getting those testimonials is crucial. And I can only share my experience, and that's taken us to, to you know, beyond the realms not that we dreamt of but we've grown at a massive rate but i think to when what helped us get there or what helped me get there is in the first i think the first three months of when you set your agency up you're at a very delicate stage you're learning a lot of information you're watching a lot of different people online who are all kind of telling you the same thing but in many many different ways you get a bit confused with it all i think people are then telling you to niche down and not niche down and then so then getting testimonials of people you end up going around and around and around in circles and you want to work with everyone or no one or whatever but i think my advice to those that are starting in sma is there is no harm in approaching someone and if they have an element of doubt in them on basically on you then to ease their, to ease that doubt with them, then there is no harm in offering a free trial. I did that. That is my personal experience, and it worked like an absolute treat for me. So I would offer a two-week free trial, implement either lead gen or it's very difficult to do it with the e-com. I can tell you that now because you can't see e-com results in two weeks. It's a much, much longer project. But if you're particularly doing lead gen, you can do a two-week free trial. I, I know you're not massively keen, Harry, on that, but it worked for me. 
I had five people that I worked with on a free trial. I signed three of them off the back of the really successful two weeks that I implemented. What I will say is though, if you're going to give a free trial to, to a potential client, you have to have in writing an agreement to say that going forward, your fee will be $1,000, $2,000 a month, whatever you think. And that on the back of it, they're going to give you a video testimonial. My view is <clears throat> you cannot, <clears throat> my view is that you cannot, get, you, ah, let me start this again. What I'm trying to say is my view is that you cannot have a written testimonial because written testimonials can be written by your grandma or your sister yeah. or even by yourself. They're not genuine. I don't think people think they're genuine either. So you have to get a video testimonial where you're getting a real life person on a video saying this person is really credible, did a great job for me. I would use them and not just that, I would recommend them. And that carries a lot of weight. So I think if you're going to do it, you just have to have a firm, firm understanding in place with you and the client of what you expect after that period. Um, and it can't be for more than two weeks. And if anyone's listening to this, you might be thinking, well, who pays for the ad spend? the client will pay for the ad spend always. You, they, you're managing their ad spend on TikTok or YouTube or Facebook, Meta, whatever. You, all you're doing for two weeks is giving your time up for free for two weeks to manage 500 pounds, dollars, whatever of their money on a platform to get some leads. You never pick up the ad spend. And I've seen people do that, by the way, Harry, like yeah. it's, I've seen people go really try and do everything and even pick up some expenses really don't do that. But yeah, I've got no, I, it worked for me not having, um, giving a free trial. You then get to the point where you, you, you're when, I can tell you something now, if you do a two week free trial with a potential client and you do a good job, they will think you're like the Messiah because <laughs> lead, once leads, they honestly, they will think you're, you're a genius because leads will start coming in that they never normally had. Um, and they look at it and go, okay, Tom is really valuable to me. He knows the platform. He knows how to do this. He knows how to get results. So once you get a sweet spot on lead gen on whatever platform, let's say meta, the meta platforms, they will think you are a genius. And, it, and then the decision for them to take you on at a retainer of maybe $1,000 a month, that then becomes a little bit of a no-brainer. So because their, phone will be, it, their, really their phones will be ringing more, they'll be getting more inquiries, they'll be getting yeah. more messages on Facebook, Instagram. So it's not necessarily just the leads that they're going to be getting. It's the exposure as well, isn't it? It's, it's like it, they, they're not going to want to live without you. That's, that's actually a really interesting point because when you're running ads on, let's say, Instagram, Facebook, Meta, it is about the result. It's about getting, if you're doing a lead gen campaign for a let's say a dentist, okay, that is crucial that you bring in leads at the lowest possible price you can. So if they've got an ad budget of a thousand pounds, thousand dollars a month, then you want to be making sure you're bringing in leads at the most, at the cheapest possible price, because then you're going to stretch that budget out. What people also need to remember is actually it's not, it is about the leads, but as a secondary, and this is something you can sell and talk about when you're having reviews with your clients is the reach and the impressions that you get from these ads, you reach a huge amount of people, which in turn is actually brand awareness for that business. So they are, it's brand awareness campaigns and lead gen. And in some ways you can actually sell it on that and say, if you're struggling to get it over the line, you're struggling to get a deal to get this client to commit and sign with you. You can say to them, yeah, I will be running brand awareness with a lead gen campaign together because up to about 25, 30,000 people, maybe more in your local area will see your ads, see your brand. And you'll get a lot of clicks of people who want to look at your Instagram and your Facebook page. So that's I think it's also- yeah. That's yeah. especially, so, sorry to interrupt, that's, but that's especially useful for people who operate in a really local level, isn't it? If you're working with like a day spa who only operate in a 20 mile radius and you're only running like lead gen campaigns and brand awareness campaigns in that 20 mile radius, that brand awareness is so crucial, right? You know, in comparison to an econ brand that sells all across the world, then it's not like it's not going to hold as much weight. Um, it will, but not as much as a really condensed 20 mile radius for a really local business. 
Yeah, the impressions that you get on a local level are significant. And um, so, yeah, you can, you, I think going back to the testimonials, there is, you can get case studies done. And the case studies and testimonials are, are actually very, very different. Um, and we can talk about that. But definitely, if you are really struggling, you'll get into a low point. And I think it's what I'm trying to stress is if you're, if you've been doing out, I wouldn't default to giving free, a two week free trial. I, I would not make that your default knee no. position. However, I went to it because I, I had a mentor at the time who preached it. And so I implemented it straight from the go and it worked for me. However, I think you can do your very best to try and get it over the line and use a two week free trial as a kind of a backup plan. Yeah. And if you, if you think it's not going to come off and there and the client is kind of kind of dicking you around with, yeah, you know, I will work with you or yeah, let, let's do it in September. Let's do it in October. Oh yeah. Things aren't quite right. Oh, I've had to think about it. I'm not sure when you're getting all that type of pushback, which you will, you can then say to them, look, if we do it, if we get started next week, I will give you two weeks for free. And then after two weeks, you can decide to either run away or continue with me. And if you continue with me, these are the conditions. So I think use it as a, as a secondary option to hook a client, hook a client in really. Yeah. I, there's two other things we've not spoke about either in terms of getting your first client without any testimonials. You can either, not either actually, if, you, if, you, if you're struggling to get, if you're struggling to get clients because of no testimonials and you've got a reasonable network of family, friends that have, like everyone knows at least two, well, everyone knows someone who knows someone that owns a business, like everyone does, whether it be a shitty jewellery business <clears throat> on the corner of the high street or a, I don't know, a dental practice or a landscaper or someone who washes cars or whatever, you can go to them and say, oh, right, do your full pitch, do the full presentation. Say, right, all we need from you is 300 pounds a month for ad spend on a really local level, and I'm going to get you five customers. If you do that for them, and obviously those five customers have to make more than 300 pounds or whatever the ad spend is, but they can give you a testimonial. You don't need to charge a service fee. Just go to someone who knows someone who owns a business use your existing network to find those people just to get a testimonial of them. And then you're going to run you know, into no problems. All you need is one video with someone vouching for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the inner circle in SMA. When you're starting in SMA digital marketing, your inner circle is so crucial. Now, some people generally don't have an inner circle. And what we mean by inner circle is like Harry's has said, anyone's your friends, family who has a business, friends of friends of friends, um, anyone you can get your hands on that you can kind of approach because that's then called a warm lead, okay? You'll get a massively different response because you're being referred or your family friend or whatever, and they're going to give you a go. You're going to get much more of a forgiving, um, you'll get much more forgiveness if you're inexperienced, okay? Because they will want to do it on behalf of their friend who's referred you, and it's kind of a favor, really. So, that the inner circle is absolutely what you live and breathe by. And I, I, I still tap into my, you know, I'm, I'm nearly three years in on this and our agency is blown up, but I'm still tapping into my inner circle of people who I know have a business and they, they know what I do as a job because it's all over social media. And they, we, we talk about it, but I'm still knowing that some of my pe friends and people in my life have businesses. I'm going to tap them up because that could be a thousand, fifteen hundred, dollar retainer um and i think when you're starting out at the beginning you really do have to establish and write down all the write down on a piece of paper everyone you know write down potentially who they know if you know joint friends and start hitting them up and, and texting them saying hey man i've just started an agency i'm getting it off the ground do you know anyone who has a business i'd love to work with them for experience and then it could be that you may have to give a free trial or they may give you a I know someone who recently worked with, I think his uncle's neighbor who, who had a, like a clothing store. So he didn't get paid huge amounts for it, but it was still $500 retainer. And you have to start somewhere. And I think people are rushing at a million miles an hour in SMMA to get to the levels that me and you have worked really, really hard at. <clears throat> yeah, I think when, when people first start, they don't, at least when I started, I didn't really want to, tap into my existing network because I was scared it wasn't going to work. And I think a lot of people can probably relate to that. They don't want to say, I don't know, mum, can you refer me to uh, your the business that you work with? 
They don't want to do that because they're scared of not only getting rejected, but scared they can't get results for them. They're scared they can't get results for people in their network, and then people in their network are going to judge them and say, oh, you've, you've, you've wasted my money. And then that affects relationships. But if you've got a clear plan, and it's all about expectations, we talk about this all the time. If you've got a clear plan, there's no way they can it can ruin a relationship or anything. But the only way it can ruin a relationship is if you go in and say, I'm going to make you 10 grand this month off a 500 pound ad spend. Like that, yeah. that's the only way you're, you're going to overpromise. They're going to be dissatisfied because you've under delivered according to your over promise. And then that's how the relationship is going to get ruined. But that's the same with every client. And I think it's a massive, massive, massive mistake people make in a meeting that affects their relationship with their client moving forward. You go into a meeting and say, and people do this all the time with their outreach. They'll put in their outreach method. So even before the meeting, they'll say, I can add six figures of revenue to your agency in four months, not your agency to your business, sorry. And it's like, there's no way you can, you can say that. Not, not every business can have that added to their, yeah. their business because they can't logistically deal with that type of revenue. Yeah. And then when it's, they go, and then when it continues, every month they're like, well, where's this thing you promised me? Where's this yeah. extra hundred grand you promised me? And the client's always going to be dissatisfied. Even if you do get a 5X ROAS, 5X return on their investment with you and your service and your ads, then they're expecting a 20, so then they're not going to carry on. It's better to I, promise them two and get them four. Yeah, that is such a good point to raise is the you have the expectation of clients can be really, really high. And that's no down to the fault of the person who is selling the dream of advertising online, like marketing online. I've actually had someone DM me recently saying, Tom, I've got a client on a trial basis. I feel really bad because I've kind of qualified. I've kind of said I'll bring 80 qualified leads a month to him. And I'm thinking, why did you say, I text him back saying, well, why did you say that? He said, because I didn't know if that was achievable or not. Yes. It's a, that is such a typical situation, which a lot of newbies find themselves in is they hear all these other people saying, oh, I'll get you qualified leads. We'll bring you in a hundred leads a month and et cetera. If you don't know, you can't promise that. And honestly, you have to set the, that's now, he is now fucked with that client because that client will want 80 qualified leads and he's not going to bring 80 qualified leads in on the meta platform. He's just not going to do it. So you have to, at the beginning, set the bench, set the, the, the expectations really clear to say, we've had people say to us, Tom and Harry, can you guarantee me 40 leads a month? And do you know what our response is to that? It's no, we can't. And if they don't like that answer, then they, they go to someone else who will give them that answer and then under like under deliver. Yeah. At least what we do in our agency is we tell people the cold hard facts. We'll say to people, you need three months of a learning phase on this because it's going to take us time to understand X, Y, Z, which you which I won't go into now. But you know, you you cannot, you have to absolutely set your stall out straight away and be honest and say, well, look, I can maybe get you there. It's going to take a lot of testing in this process but I'm not going to give you a figure of how many leads I'm going to bring in for you. And if you're trying to tease me into giving you a figure, then that's a bit of a red flag and you kind of have to move away from the client. Yeah. And, and clients will do that. Clients will say to you, oh, Absolutely. Give me a guarantee. Yeah. I'll, they'll say, I'll sign on today if you can give me a guarantee. And it's so, especially when you, if you've not signed a client before, it's going to be so fucking tempting to take that offer and say, yeah, I will, but don't. We, we, we literally tell clients in meetings, no, we don't work with us then. Come back to us yeah. when you're. But that's not saying that we're not going to get them results. That's saying we're not going to we're not going to tell you the exact results we're going to get because that would be a lie. There's just yeah. we'd rather not work with you on a on a lie, like lie. That is lying, isn't it? it yeah, it's, it's over promising and under delivering in sales, whether it's SMMA or anything else. You, it's a disaster. It's a fucking disaster. Like you have to. Even if, when it comes to ROAS, you know, you see people saying, I can, I can guarantee you a 10x return. My God, you're putting the pressure on yourself. And I, and I think you're doing it. I think people do that to get the initial three month contract deliberately don't, well, not deliberately, but they won't achieve what they said they're going to achieve. They lose the contract, but they, in the time they've lost one, they've won another one. I don't think, I don't think it holds weight anymore either. I, I, I genuinely, I don't think a business owner is going to see an email where you say you're going to add 100 grand worth of revenue onto their top line. And actually believe it. I don't that big in, in every response of the academy members that get clients or 
people that just message us on Instagram that aren't Academy members even us, I've never seen that work of actually signing a long-term client because I don't think people believe it. The clients would rather see a compliment on what they're doing well than saying, right, I'm just going to show you a completely free strategy of how you can get results. Show them the strategy and boom, you're done. Yeah. It's not, you don't need to do these wildish things because no one believes it. You've got to remember these, a lot of these people have been in business for 15, 20 years. They're not yeah. stupid. They're not going to believe some idiot of the internet that says they're going to add a hundred grand worth of revenue in three months. Like they're not stupid. They're not going to believe that. So it, it just makes you look silly. And, and the other thing, the other thing is that I don't think in my personal view that you can just offer meta ads anymore. I think those days have gone. I think there was a situation where maybe 2018, you know, I think there was a huge boom in, in the meta platform on advertising. All these agencies popped up and actually it was easier to get um, results on the platform because the tracking was better. We all fully well know now that the tracking on the meta platform is pretty fucked. Okay it's going to show you maybe half of the real true result. What you can't do now, and I don't think it, it carries as much, is just offering meta ads because you're, you're losing out on a massive other world of other platforms to get results for your client. And I'm talking things like, really, if you're going to start an agency, you should be familiar with how TikTok ads work. That platform is phenomenal and it's growing brands, econ brands and lead gen brands at a massive rate. You then got YouTube ads. You then have potentially Snapchat ads, which can be effective. Um, so you really, you, and email marketing, let me stress to you now, email marketing, offering that as part of your SMMA is huge because guess what? To email a list of 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 people, it's free. And if you do it right, you get a really great reaction from people. Even SMS, SMS marketing is now blowing up a lot more than it ever has been. Sending a text message out to someone to nudge them to buy or, you know, to, to, as a follow-up process of your lead gen, for example, implementing SMS marketing, it's, it's, it's so effective. But you can't, in 2022, you can't just offer Facebook ads anymore. In my personal view, I don't think it's enough for your agency. And I think you can't sustain that. I think you'll end up just disappearing to people who come along like me and Harry, who offer everything else. And then we snap them away from you straight away. And I think yeah. those you days always, are gone. Yeah. I, mean, I, I miss the old Facebook ad days, mate, when you used to be able to target people that earned a specific amount of money and all that stuff. Like that was just a dream, wasn't it? Like you could just, it was like, it was, that's, it that's, was that's, phenomenal. Yeah. That's when, that's when people could really sell the dream of like put one pound in, get 10 pound out. You could literally sell a fucking yo-yo to an Eskimo and you'd find the Eskimo <laughs> and you'd sell it. Like it'd be so easy, but Eskimos, I mean, Eskimos love yo-yos. But yeah, I can't remember, I've lost my train of thought now, mate. No, you know, you're right. You, I think it's, yeah, I think that's something if people, you need to understand in SMMA is you can't just offer Facebook ads anymore. Yeah. Um, so people might be thinking then, well, what, how do I do the other bits and bobs? There's so much, there's so much content that people can learn either from, from some of the free stuff that you put on your Instagram, Harry, or the free videos, the, the training videos I put on my Instagram. There's loads of content online that you can learn um, to, to get to where you need to be, but you, yeah, you can't just offer Facebook ads, but because the targeting has disappeared, in actually quite a dramatic way. I don't think people, again, that's something in our industry people don't really talk about, um, is the fact that you, you've lost, it's like Superman. It's like the original Superman, right? I love these analogies, mate. <laughs> Eskimo yo-yos to Superman. <laughs> Facebook ads, Facebook meta ads now in 2022, it is like the original Superman who had all the powers to do, you know, x-ray vision and to fly backwards and turn the, the world the other way around. He had it all. It's like now Superman walking in like disheveled with a ripped cape and he has like he half needed, the amount of, half the amount of powers he had initially. <laughs> it's like a, a, to get off the ground. It's like a drunk, hairy Superman now who has some powers, but he's not near, near as effective as he was. And that is Facebook ads where you have very limited targeting now. It's, it's certainly not what it was. In many cases, you actually can't target a particular demographic at all. They don't know 
through their own fault because of, of data, a breach of data, et cetera, et cetera. They now, and then obviously the iOS 14 um, complete mess that, and the, the situation they got in with Apple. They don't know what people are interested in because people get the chance now to opt out. And I think a lot of people do opt out. Therefore, when in your business manager dashboard, you're seeing 50 leads or 20 leads or a cost per lead of $15. There's no way, no way of telling, no way yeah. of telling how that, if that's and, true and that's or not. not. That's not saying Facebook ads are dead completely because we get fucking unreal results for, you know, 50% of our clients still on Facebook. Just, But that's just because they're suited for that platform. And it's Absolutely. not necessary. And, and they're more, they don't need to be really, they're not really niched products, are they? Products or services. They're products and services that can can be fairly open targeting. It's the ones where you need to be super niche down, like when you're trying to sell a yo-yo to an Eskimo, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's like when you really need to find those niche group of people, it's, it's going to be tough on Facebook. But if you're going after services and products that you can sell to the majority of people, fairly open like fairly open or you're doing retargeting campaigns, look like audiences, they're still great. Like if you've got a strong data pot and you can go to Facebook and say, right, just show ads to this, this pot of 100,000 people or make a lookalike audience on the this audience of uh, this email list of 15,000 people. It wants one to 2% look like audience on an email list of 15,000 people or 15,000 people that purchased in the past year. That's amazing. You can, you can do still do that on Facebook. It's where... A brand's coming to you, never run Facebook ad campaigns before, has no pixel data, no email list, no data pot to go off, and you're just going off cold traffic to a super targeted audience. That's when you're going to really struggle. And, and I think now more than ever, you can't get away with shitty ads. You can't get away with shitty ad creatives. You can't get away with real. I don't remember I saw a post and I mentioned this when I was 14 really happened. It, it's now bringing to light good marketers and bad marketers. If you're like traditional good marketing, like if you're good at it, you're going to succeed. If you're bad at it and all you do is here's a product, buy it now, no pain points, not selling the benefits, just the features, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you can really sell a product through strong copy, strong creative, you know, being imaginative, then you're still going to succeed on any of the platforms. It's just those people that went on Facebook in 2018 said, here's a, here's a bracelet, here's a watch, buy now. And back in the day, you could do that and get the five extra hours. Now you can't, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, I, I think definitely the the behavior of advertising on the meta platforms is changing. They have to windle out all the shitty ads. And there's so many of them, which is embarrassing and actually devalues the platform. When I when you see some ads for hair, tra like particularly hair transplant um, ads that pop up on feeds, some of them look like... A seven-year-old child has put it together. It is, and if I was the client looking at it, I'd be like, "Whoa, you need to take that off because you're damaging my brand." And I, it honestly, the standard of some of the creatives is piss poor. Is but that's cool. perfect for the people who do it good because you'll stand your ads out amongst a, a very crowded place. Your ads will stand out a mile away. Yeah. But people don't give. Harry, people do not give. I don't think in this industry in SMA. They don't think about how creative they need to be. Mm, and they're actually not true. willing. They're not willing to put in the effort to have a look around at ads, like the, the market. And that's called market research. And you, people don't talk about market research in SMA. You think, do a creative, get an image or go onto Canva, put some text over it, post it out. Well, what is, go on to Facebook ads library. Go on to Google and type in hair transplant ads, if that's what you're running for, or dentist ads or whatever niche you're working with or the, whatever business you're working with, go on and type it into Google ads uh, and Google images. And you'll see, you'll see some different variations of what you want to put out there. You can then form, have take what's good out of all of it that you like and put, put together an ad. And if you don't do that, you will not know. And I do think that people, we, I often get people DM me to say, Tom, I'm struggling to think of what I can do for an ad. I'm not creative. You know, you learn it really quickly. You get very familiar with what works for you and what you know works for other clients. And it's that is called testing. That's A-B split testing. And it doesn't have to happen with just one client. You can have 10 clients, find the best variations out of 10 clients and then put it into play amongst all of them because you know what works. So definitely that people don't talk about how creative you have to be in this job and, and you do. Yeah, 
and I'm leading on from that, talking about A-B split testing, that's a note I get that all the time. Man. People message me saying, Harry, I've been running this ad, I've been running this ad piece, piece of ad copy in this, this campaign for two weeks and it's not working, what do I do? And I say, well, what have you done prior? And they say, no, I've just done one ad, one creative. And I said, but, but why? Like that's, that's like throwing one rod into a pond for two minutes, not catching a fish and saying there's no fish in the pond. Like you, you can't do that. And the yeah. analogy, I, I always use that pond analogy, don't I? When it comes to Facebook you love, ads. You love, Harry Kirk loves a pond analogy. <laughs> I really do love a pond analogy. <laughs> right, guys, the pond analogy for Facebook ads, what it is, and you can use this when you talk to a client about the testing phase. You're not going to just run first ad and get loads of sales or get loads of leads in. It's just not going to happen. What you need to do, you need to imagine the Facebook ad platform or the TikTok ad platform or any 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 platform as a big pond filled with, with, filled with fish. And you're sat on the edge of it with a rod and you have to find where in that pond all the fish live. And you also need to find out in that section of the pond where all the fish are, what bait they like. And where the fish live is the audience and what bait they like is the ad. So you have to throw your rod into all different parts of these ponds with the same bait. That way, you know, you know, it's a control variable. You only, can, you only change one variable in that pond. So then that bait's best received by getting sales, catching fish in the top right-hand corner of the pond. That's audience one on Facebook. Then you go into that audience one on Facebook and you test five different baits. In the fish world, you try, I don't know, fucking baits are worms, maggots, fucking bacon, I don't, I don't know. And you throw it into that corner of the pond. That's add one, add two, add three, all different creatives, different copies. You throw that into that, that audience, which one gets the most sales out of there. Then you have an ad set and you have the ad. You, you know where the fish are and you know what bait they like. And you keep going in and in and in on that corner of the pond on that audience. You then break down those, those results after you put a bigger budget into it and say, right, what, what specific gender was getting, was getting the most catches? So, oh, it was all orange fish that was catching the, you know, the winning bait. So I'm now only going to target orange fish in that corner of the pond. That's like targeting only age 24 to 34 in that specific targeting option because you yeah. know that's bringing, in all the, that's bringing in all the leads and all the sales. So you're no longer spending money on the stuff that wasn't. So as you can see, you're slowly going in and in and in to get that winning, that winning ad and that winning targeting option. That's the point of analogy. Heard it here first. What Use a that. fucking analogy. That's that's the, I've got to say, that's the best I've ever explained it. <laughs> People are probably um, listening thinking, what the fuck is he talking about? He's in fish. <laughs> I think you'll find that people, the more people listen to us, the more people are going to understand that we try and put everything into an analogy format. So it just helps people understand and put it in perspective. And we come me. like me and Harry come up with the most ridiculous, <laughs> the most ridiculous analogies, um, which we actually use with our clients and they, they, I think they fully enjoy it to be honest, mate. That makes it more interesting as well. Keeps their attention. If you're talking about yeah, ad sets and <laughs> geographical locations, no, I want to talk about fish. I want to talk about worms. Rot. <laughs> yeah. Fish and, and, Eskimo and, and yo yos. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, one thing that we were going to talk about today is onboarding, uh, onboarding a client. So, when you win a client, because again, we've had a DM come in regarding like onboarding. How do I onboard a client successfully? And what's the process? How do you do it? So I think I just want to quickly touch on onboarding a client. Now, again, if you if you've got to the point where you've done a presentation, you've done outreach, you've done your presentation, you've delivered enough value in the meeting where they're on board, like they are in in terms of working with you, you've agreed your retainer and your service levels, okay? And they're like, right, we're going to get this going. I want to start running TikTok ads and Instagram ads as of. 10 days time okay that's 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 the situation what do you then do and how do you onboard that client so many people i i watch a lot of content from other people and they make an absolute meal out of this they really really drag it out and make it way over complicated now it's very very simple to onboard a client very simple first of all when you've got the agreement in place you want to send them a contract 
I cannot stress this enough to people in SMMA. Send a very basic contract. It doesn't have to be a contract. It can be an agreement, but on paper about what you're going to do and how long you're going to work with them for and what the retainer is. That needs to go to them. Step one, send them the contract. They need to sign it and return it. That shows an element of commitment from them. That's super important. Once you've got that, then it's a case of getting information that you need from them so you can do your job effectively. So number one on that would be what you're going to need to produce creatives um, and to produce content that looks on brand. You're going to need their artwork, their logos, PNG, JPEG, anything that they've got and any color scheme it could be some branding guidelines that, that you've actually not asked and they want you to use, but you need to ask them for it. So Get a branding guidelines doc, have that conversation with them about artwork, logos, fonts, maybe that they like to use because they like to use the same fonts. You never know, but it's definitely worth getting that information sent to you. Once you've got that, you want to have a call which onboards their software because you're going to struggle to run ads if you're not having access as a third part, third person or an admin. You need to have get access to their TikTok uh, business manager, their Facebook meta business manager, um, maybe their email software, maybe their SMS service, text messaging service that they might already have. You don't know. You need a call that sets up all that so you can take control. It could be that they give you some passwords and usernames to log into certain softwares that they use. That's really important. Within that same call, to be honest, you can then have like a discovery fact find call, which you should have done as part of your meeting prep, but you are going to need to know and sit down with your client and say, right, what does your perfect client look like? Oh, they're this age, they're female, they are interested, interested in shoes or fashion or whatever it will be. But you need to really get your head around what the client, the perfect client looks like for them, because their expectation, your expectation could be worlds apart. And if you don't ask that, then you're going to be, it's going to be a bit of a struggle for you. So certainly have like a discovery session in the same call as onboarding the software where you are literally finding out everything you need to know. Um, even, even like location, it could be that they, they want to advertise to a 50, 60 mile radius and you thought it was going to be a hundred. Lots of things you need to pick up on that will save you a lot of time. And once you've done that, really, it's just an agreement date of when you're going to start. Um, confirmation of how much ad spend um, they're willing to step to put towards it, which you should know already. Um, and that is onboarding in a nutshell, really. And that me and you, Harry, have onboarded clients in about 15 minutes. And that is yeah. <laughs> that is not that is no joke. We can, we've got their softwares linked up. We've got access to their email. They use a, a particular text messaging service, which they had and never used. We had access to it. Within 50 minutes, we had everything we need to know. And on the call, they sent through all their logos. We knew exactly what their demographic was in terms of their business, how much they turn over. We knew all this stuff to help us. And it was done. We came off the call and we were like, well, that's the quickest session I've ever done in my life. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's exactly how you do it. In terms of onboarding mistakes, the biggest mistakes people make, I mean, I can start off with a big one, is not building <clears throat> if you work with a business not building their business manager the correct way and you're running ads from your own ad account you're potentially i've seen it be done in, in the past you're spending the ad spend and then charging them the ad spend that back. is that is such an important thing you've just said because people do it all the time or, it's bad news. or they create all of the assets in their name so they'll create the business owner a page they'll use their business manager their ad sets They'll use their own pixel. I've seen it done where they put the same pixel on every one of their clients' websites. Like when you set up a client, when you work with them for the first time on Facebook, Google or anything, they need to have their own business manager. They need to have their own ad, set, uh, ad account. They need to have their own Facebook pixel on their own platform, on their own profile. And then you just connect your business manager to their business manager, or you just add yourself as an admin to their business manager. Just don't merge the two. We've worked with so many people like that. We go to onboard them and the client goes, I don't own my page. I don't own my business manager. I can't get access. I'm not admin of the own, my own page. And it's like, well, who is? Oh, the old agency that I paid 10 grand didn't get me any results. Now we have to delay the process to get that back. Contact the old agency. They don't know the password and we can't get in. It's just a mess. So common though. You see it all the time. And that's just, yeah, it's just, piss poor people doing things that they don't know how to do and, and, and they're just bumbling their way through it um 
yeah yeah well mate we're, make, sure we, make sure we wrap this one up and yeah, then 30, do another one minutes. yeah right guys right, cool. so i hope you enjoyed um it's going to be uploaded to youtube apple music spotify you probably see loads of clips on tiktok shorts reels um yeah just keep following drop us a drop us a message on instagram harry underscore smma tom underscore smma um and yeah, ask any questions that you want us to cover in future episodes. And we'll, uh, yeah, see you in the next one.